Probably, okay. Okay. Yeah. And also along the VETS line, the U.S. Mil uh, Military Veterans Motorcycle Club will have a food drive tomorrow, 9 to 5, at the parking lots at Kroger and Save-A-Lot. Excellent. So uh, <clears throat> set aside a little time on Wednesday to honor the vets uh, that have defended our country over the years and, and many have made the ultimate sacrifice of their life. Yes, they have. Well, congratulations to all the winners uh, Tuesday's election and, and also to the losers. Sure. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and money and, and to uh, run in, for, in these elections and unfortunately somebody has to win, and, or fortunately, and congratulations to those of the winners and also uh, thanks to those uh, that made it happen. Exactly right. People in the polls. Uh, Oh, w yeah. R O I was there. Poll workers and clerk's office, uh, folks who take care of all that through the course of the day. Plus, uh, Sager was there. Yeah, we had uh, Channel Channel 4, Channel, four, channel 5, four was everybody was there. Hard workers. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, Zebby's been found. Back, yes. Yeah, what? Do you think they fed Zebby while they <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Zebby, if, if, if not back, we'll be back very shortly. Yeah, those kids may have thought that was a smart thing. Well, 50 years from now, they're <laughs> telling their grandkids about it. They'll, they'll say, oh, my. Uh, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Uh, okay. wish I hadn't done that. Oh, kids. Fulton County property tax are due November the 10th. That's right. Don't forget to pay those or you get a late fee. Okay, House passed the transportation bill yesterday, $325 billion. That's a six-year program. Okay. Is that a lot of money? Yeah. <laughs> well, they were running out of money. They don't have well, any I money. know, you know. They don't have any money. Well, but, yeah. you know, we've talked about this before. Raise the gas raise the gas tax. Right. It hadn't been raised yeah. in 25 yeah. years. No. And They're politicians, though. <laughs> Well, I don't know where this three hundred twenty-five billion is going to come from, but ah, a billion here, a billion there, uh, you know. Well, they also they tied in there. They they renewed the trade bank. You know, you, you yes, they make, did. Yes, yes, they and did. And that had to be done. Right, and and uh, they were all in favor of that. Senator Coates, Senator Donnelly, Representative Walorski, they all went along with that idea. They jumped on the bandwagon. Everybody had to do that. That's right. Yeah. For people that don't know what the trade bank is. Uh, that's a bank that guarantees collections of uh, goods and services sold overseas. Right. So that if GE is selling something to Germany, they guarantee it. Otherwise, uh, trade would be uh, uh, inhibited somewhat, maybe. At least, at least that's what they were saying. And that, that, that bank's been there a long, long time. It has been, right. you got You got exactly. to have it to, to function. Bob and Tom, WIBC. Yes. Bob's retiring. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Wow, a lot of years together, those 80, two guys. Uh, they started in 83. Wow. That, that was before you, wasn't it? That's 32 <laughs> years. That's a long time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. As long as I've been living. Yeah. Okay. Veterans Day, a little trivia this morning on okay. Veterans Day. Veterans Day wasn't always observed on November the 11th. How many years was it observed on the fourth Monday of October? Three, five, or seven. Okay, I'll work on that. You, you take the middle one. Yeah, Chris and I will be thinking about that through the rest of the program. <laughs> well, how about Amy? <laughs> well, Amy can think about that too. Amy can Google that and figure that out. Well, I'm sure she could. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably very rapidly. We'll have to talk to Amy a little later. We'll okay. Get, yeah, get down to the nitty gritty of what's, what's <laughs> what, what this program's all about. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is the fun stuff. Then. Yeah. Yeah. This keeps us awake. Oh, in the sports six. Uh, session uh, we got to congratulate the Rochester High School volleyball team oh exactly they got to the finals of the semi-state they did congratulations to them I think they were 36 and 2 for the year sure. that's their uh, best high school high, it was a Rochester high school right. record you have a note about West Meyer there finishing 28th in the state cross-country meet right. okay congratulations yes indeed them. Okay, T want to talk a little Colts? Sure, why not? They Three fired, and five. They fired their offensive coordinator. About time. <laughs> I, I was going to ask you how you felt about that. <laughs> I, I won't mince any words. Ready. I won't mince any words about it. Okay, now we got Rob Shadinsky. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. 
Sure. He, he was sure. head coach at Cleveland for a yeah, while. You and I could do a better job than Pep Hamilton, his offensive coordinator. So, Well, uh, <laughs> my coaching experience is I, I had years and years uh, on Sunday morning at the coffee table. Right? I see. <laughs> or Monday morning, I should say. Okay. Okay, well. <laughs> they got a tough game this week. Oh, yeah, Denver. Yep, 4.30 start. You'll be there? No, nah, I'll, be, I'll be in the vicinity. Oh, okay. Yeah. I bet you'll be carrying it on the... Oh, yeah, we'll have it right here. Yeah. Starting Broadcast starts at 3.30 Sunday yeah. afternoon. Pacers. Yes. They won a game. Yeah, they did. They're 2-3 and three now, I think. Yeah. And they play tonight the Heat. Miami Heat. Ooh. In those old uniforms? Yes, in the Hickory uniforms. Historical. Right. Throwbacks. Huh? The historical uniforms? Yes. yes. Yeah, I did not school. realize that. Yeah, tonight. Oh, you learn a lot of things. Yeah, yeah I just right. need to listen to you every That's why this every program time. is so insightful it's and helpful and all that kind of thing. There's a story in the Star today about the, the, the person that made these yeah. uniforms. And uh, the only difference is they had to make them a lot bigger <laughs> <laughs> than, <laughs> than they did for the actors in the movie, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, that's exciting. But uh, one of the uh, sad things about the Pacers was yeah. Mel Daniels passed away this week. Uh, great player. Oh man, great, great individual. Yeah, and uh, they had a funeral for yes, him yesterday. Did. Our own Bill Newton played with him. That's right. And uh, I talked to uh, Bill yesterday, uh, the day before. He went to the funeral yesterday, and, and uh, I asked him to come on the radio next yeah. Friday. We're going to talk about Pacers. Excellent. And uh, Mel Daniels and uh, good. If you've never heard Bill's story, uh, it's exciting. And it is. Uh, it's fun to listen to. Okay, they uh, they have the uh, monumental marathon set for Indianapolis tomorrow. In fact, I have a couple of daughters that are actually running in that. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yes. Seventeen thousand. Yes. So one is be... flying in from Florida to Indianapolis to run in that. By the way. Okay. 17,000 people. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yes. Downtown Indianapolis? Downtown Indianapolis. Wow. Uh, the New York Marathon was last Saturday. Right. Of which I ran that a, 29 years ago. Ah. And there were 20,000 in that race. And you you ran a lot of marathons before you yeah, before I died, put your yeah. career on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you kind of get addicted to running. Oh, well, I bet. Do you run, Chris? Uh, no. Not okay. much of a runner. Okay. I wish I could say I run too. <laughs> I come? run up and down the stairs. That counts. That counts. <laughs> that, counts. <laughs> that, that counts. That counts. Okay. Some upcoming events. Friends of Fulton County Public Library hope hosts the first Friday book sale, 10 to 5.30 today. That's right. Today. That first Friday. Today. So you go down there and get some books. Right. And, uh, Help out the friends. Uh, the James F. Talbot VFW in Kiwana hosts a fish fry 4 to 7 tomorrow. Uh, also tickets for the Fort Wayne Philharmonic Orchestra Holiday Pops Concert, which is 7.30 on November the 28th. Uh, tickets are for sale at First Federal Flirt Streamliner in the library. I tell you what, that's a great, great concert. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Eagles uh, Auxiliary, 18th annual Christmas Bazaar uh, tomorrow at 10.30 to 3 at the Eagles Lodge. Also, Ladies Day Out is uh, tomorrow from 9 to 3. Why do they say Ladies Day Out? Huh? I don't know. I in? figured you were going to explain that for us. I've seen all the signs. I've been trying to figure out exactly what that is. I'll, I'll tell you. Yes. Okay. It's uh, at the Fulton County Community Center. Uh, products from uh, woodworking, jewelry, cosmetics, clothes, Glass and candles are a few of the items to be sold. Laundry soap sold by the Fulton Community Center Committee also can be picked up during the day. Okay, so, good. So anything you want to think. Good deal. All the fun stuff. Hey, right. yeah. All the stuff ladies like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, now Farmer's Market is moving tomorrow to okay. out to the museum. This the is a winter home. sure sign of winter. They'll have uh, baked goods there. and and uh, coffee and donuts and just uh, there's no fee to get in just go out and browse around nickel plate trail is now part of the united states bicycle route excellent excellent so you can ride ride from michigan down to yeah and and of course this trail is 
is part of that. It is. Not to, so. Well done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. One thing uh, we've always mentioned this every year about getting rid of the leaves, and uh, there seems to be a aversion to mulching leaves. I see it. <laughs> I mean, it's so easy. You just it run is. your lawnmower run over your lawnmower and, and, and go in and watch a football game right. or, or turn on RTC Channel right. 4 or 5. That's right. But we, we rake them out into the curb. Well, sure. fortunately, we don't burn them anymore, but right. we used to burn them. Well, then the city has to pick them up. That costs money. Uh, it's excellent mulch, as uh, Mark, it does make good Mark mulch. Kepler will tell you. Yes, it, Be yeah. sure and ask him when the next time he's on here so we get that information. Okay, let's move right along to some flowers. Okay. RTC Communication pledged $10,000 to the Fulton County Community Foundation Community Fund. Instead of giving Chris a pay raise, they get $10,000. <laughs> what were they thinking, Chris? Mm -hmm. Not fair. This, uh, this is match $1 for $1 for the uh, Lily Endowment, so that $10,000 becomes mm -hmm. twenty. I would encourage other businesses out there to take a look at that program, and it's uh, and that that's will go through uh, till March of 16. 2016, yeah. right? And uh, there's a half a million dollars out there that Lily that's right has uh, put out there that uh, if it's matched, uh, Fulton County gets it. So that's uh, that's good. Okay, uh, money news. Yelson, she she testified to Congress okay and said maybe she, she's the head of the Fed right uh, she's the okay. head head Fred <laughs> okay get it mm -hmm. Fred Fed mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay well anyway she, she said uh, a rake hike in December is a possibility okay quote unquote okay that sounds very political in her That's answer. what I was going to say. It's very yeah. neutral. Right. Yeah. Very neutral. <laughs> well, she, they've been saying that for some time. So, uh, but the uh, now we have an unemployment number comes out here in a little bit. Okay. Everybody what will, do they expect that will be? Uh, improving. Okay, good. It's been improving. So Nationally and in Indiana? I keep Indiana. I keep a check on Indiana. Okay. Indiana is about 4% something Last right at that area. Yeah, and uh, Indiana's uh, one of the better ones. Around. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's good. RV business is, is coming back. So uh, that that's uh, interesting and good also. So, oh, the Dow closed yesterday at 17,863. Yeah, it's getting getting closer to 18,000. It is. It's working on it. It's working. Okay, fast food workers are going to strike next week. Where? In, uh like for 270 cities oh okay mm -hmm. i don't know whether that'll affect us here or not uh, we'll see so. is that okay. for the 15 dollar pay raise or the they want to go to the 15 dollars yes is that, yeah. yeah okay we and we'll get, get chris a raise also <laughs> on the 20 dollars for chris <laughs> he works hard yeah. well anyway. we got you covered chris <laughs> tom will pay for that well, and they're going to be protesting at the Republican uh, Convention? debate. Wow. No, the, the oh, debate. debate. Oh, okay. Wednesday okay. At Milwaukee. Okay. The fast food workers? Yeah. No. Oh. They're going to be waving signs. All right. McDonald's and Burger King. And That's 15 cents. Oh, $15. Well, we'll see how that plays out. I see several of the chains of it have uh, pledged to use non-caged eggs okay that turn you on no not really <laughs> well you don't want to use those eggs from that <laughs> confined bird okay then it's a good idea yeah yeah okay well it's, that? it's got a lot of public appeal now peanuts is going to be released this weekend okay that's a big deal it is a big deal yeah they had peanuts hadn't had a film since 1980. Yeah. Oh, that wow. was before Amy was born. Yeah, probably. Actually, one year after I was born. Oh, God. I'm up there. Okay. All right, now I saw this in the USA Today. Every now and then I see things there that I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> like this one American Express Spending and Savings Tracker. Now, the American okay. Express, uh, that's a big deal. It is. They, they polled 1,500 adults. 
and the question was how much do you plan to save this year what is your goals and objective right. for right. saving right now it didn't say investing just how it much it said saving okay eleven thousand two ninety two really okay really you know, that's a stretch. That, that seems like a lot, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Seems like a, a big stretch. number. That's a stretch. Well, for those there locally that want to save that amount, First Federal's open today. <laughs> <laughs> We're open from 8.30 to 5. And you have a lot of different savings plans, right? Oh, yeah. we yeah. got we, we got lots of ways, all of which are, in, which are insured, except the products that Mark Blubaugh sell, sells, right. and they are not insured. But uh, uh, you, know, you might... You got some money to invest you might talk to him or, or us <clears throat> our go green checking account not only uh, pays you 20 cents for each debit card purchase you make which is pretty unheard of you also can use atms anywhere in the country and will reimburse up to 25 dollars per month of fees okay so it's not going to cost you anything open a green, go green checking account with the minimum deposit of 150 dollars and monthly e-statements are required save postage and save trees that way sure and that's called go green yeah go green yeah the uh, you have to agree to for direct deposit and automatic payment withdrawals on that uh, program and uh, go green checking is a personal account only with uh, one account per person there is no monthly maintenance fee it's too good to be true it is a good account uh, sure it yeah. is mm -hmm. Keep in touch with what's happening by following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. First Federal is FDIC insured and an equal housing lender, and our MMLS number is 39999027. There you go. And now the highlight of the program. Chris? Amy Rowe. Chris. Oh. Chris is the highlight. He's the, he's the new young man here. So. Well, Amy, then. speaking of new young men, you're a new young lady that joined the... Uh, chamber as executive director and uh, how long you been on the job now? I've been counting on that and I think it's about seven weeks almost. So. It flew by seven weeks did, but okay. feels right. like yesterday I got here. goes fast, doesn't it? It does. All yeah. right. Time well, flies. You know, for people out there that don't know, it, it, lot, lots of people already know you, but where'd you come from? Did you fall off the turnip truck <laughs> when you were down? I did fall off the turnip truck okay. about 30 years ago, 36. Uh, I'm actually from Rochester. You are? I am, okay. believe it or not. Born and raised. It's like a little farm at Groomy here. So uh, my parents are Gary and Anna Rowe. And uh, we grew up over there by the city park. And I walked the streets of Rochester for many years, <laughs> causing chaos. <laughs> wait, wait, I, never wait, stole, wait. I never stole Zebby, though. I didn't do that. <laughs> well, I was wondering where the chaos came from. Now we know. It was, okay. it was for what, the Rose. What, what senior prank were you in? <laughs> We will always be silent uh -huh, about that's that. Right. We have a class of 1998 on Facebook, so we keep those secrets. Uh -huh. oh, Good thinking. Okay. Yep, under lock and key. Good thinking. So, yep, that's me. So, And then I graduated from Rochester High School in 1998 and then went to Grace College. Yeah, so. And? What and else? I went to Grace College over in good old Warsaw, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to be close enough so in case I needed anything. You know, a little money or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Money just, particular. Yeah, money for you know particular. Um, but then far enough away, I could spread my wings. So, I got my degree in behavioral science and uh, left in, in what? Behavioral science. Okay. That's the uh, marketing term for it. Right. The technical is psychology and sociology. Uh, but that like fits right in with what you're doing now. Uh, you have to understand people. Sure. People are a very big part of the job. You got to know what quirks they have. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right, and uh, most recently, before you came here, where were you and what did you do there? Most recently, I got to be a part of uh, the little city of Fountain Inn, South Carolina. And uh, Fountain Inn, South Carolina has a population about the same as Rochester. And uh, I fell into that because I moved to go be with my brother and his wife. They had been in North Carolina. and. Uh, I thought I was going to work for Starbucks. I thought that was going to be my big time career after I decided that uh, working in social work was not my forte. I like people, but I didn't like them that much. So, um, but I uh, moved from that into what I was going to do retail, so we could have been on a strike. But I got, <laughs> but I got out of that. And uh, so lots of experience with customer service with people. And then I moved into uh, working in Fountain Inn in the uh, chamber there. And. All right, so you, seven weeks ago you, you uh, took up the reins of uh, 
Fulton County Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, reflections and observations so far? So far? It was interesting. I guess I'll, I'll just go back a little bit. I got to see the, I got to see Rochester from a different level. That's what actually brought me back is from Fountain Inn, we had some folks from the Rochester Downtown Partnership mm -hmm. and Economic Development and uh, City Council come down to Fountain Inn. So I looked at Rochester in a different way from that perspective. That's actually what drew me back here. And then when I've actually been in the seat, I've looked and met with lots of folks. It's probably why I'm so sleepy and need lots of coffee here because I've been running around just trying to understand the business and uh, governmental climate. I've noticed a lot of resources, Dick. I've seen good people who are trying to do good things. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of those good people don't know that the other good people are doing good things. That's one of the main things that I've noticed is that a lot of folks don't recognize or understand what the other folks are doing. So that was something that I'm looking at. What is our specific niche for the, the chamber here? Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different than Fountain Inn because Rochester is different. Right. And it's in the Midwest. So looking at what those niches are. Okay, we're speaking this morning to Amy Rowe, who's the new executive director of Fulton County Chamber of Commerce and a Rochester native and uh, was up, up to mischief at her senior year at Rochester <laughs> High School. Like every other senior, right? Rochester yeah, and yeah. the other. Well, what is the job of the Chamber of Commerce? It's interesting, Tom. It, uh, when I got here, that was one of the first things I understood um, about the Chamber, that it was a, a bit different. The understanding of the Chamber was a bit different than what I was used to in Fountain Inn. The Chamber in Fountain Inn in, in South Carolina that we dealt with, our job was to be a lobbying organization. We were to be a business support networking education organization. Thus far, the Chamber has done a lot of um, events, which is great. I understand that it is an additional organization. Right. Got to speak with Miss Allison Heidi and understand some history. Got to speak with Mr. Ted Wagner and Mr. Dick Belcher and keep asking questions to understand how the Chamber got to where it is and how we want to move it to the direction that we'd like to go, which in 2013, I believe, they moved it from the Rochester and Lake Manitow Chamber to the Fulton County Chamber. That's right. and that was a very great move. And then they actually moved the concept from just an events organization to a business support networking and um, an organization that's supposed to be more supportive towards business. Okay. So we're kind of in that awkward teenage stage. I always say when I'm speaking to people, it's, it's trying to figure out what your specific role related to the history of what you've normally done versus what direction they've decided that we need to go, which is the direction that a lot of small chambers have moved from that events to the business. Okay, Amy, how is it funded financially? Well, we have lots of wonderful sponsors like First Federal, and we have the um, platinum sponsors, the gold sponsors, and the silver sponsors. Obviously, we have our memberships, the members that from Fulton County who come in, and then any wonderfully gracious donors who decide to give us money. So we have those, we have also have our chili cook-off and the other events, and right now it looks like the events that we will be doing hopefully today when we work on the budget very exciting we will figure out which events are actually profitable and which ones do we need to, to grow to make more fun so that we can provide the events that we desire the business supported events how does the chamber how does the chamber interact or does the chamber interact with terry lee and fedco fulton economic development i think in the past they haven't as much i know that they uh, well we have supported a marketing series that they worked on. We okay. had John Schallert here yesterday right. to speak about business. He did a great job. That was supported, duly supported by Fedco and by the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce. The role that hopefully we'll be able to work for um, towards is the Rochester Downtown Partnership, which is um, part of the Chamber of Commerce and part of Fedco. Fedco is very supportive on the economic, well, Terry Lee, who is Fedco, basically. He is part of the economic restructuring group, which is part of the chamber. So okay. even though the Rochester Downtown Partnership is separate than the chamber, we work very closely with them and very closely with Fedco to work on revitalizing the downtown. Okay. And I'd like to actually work closer with Terry. Uh, we had some great conversations when he came down to Fountain Inn about events that he saw that we had done in Fountain Inn that he would like to do here. So we are working on those in six weeks, we've had a lot of conversation, and I'd like to have a lot of execution. Okay. But we've got to figure out what the party lines are and what we can make happen together. 
Yeah, we need to mention uh, there wasn't there six people from the uh, Rochester mm -hmm. community came down to visit you at Fountain. Yep, the Rochester uh, yeah, Downtown Partnership. Yeah, on their own they went down to do this, and that's a great yes, uh, thing. And uh, I'm sure if it uh, helped sell you on coming to Rochester, it was worth the trip. It was great, and it was a wonderful. I was. I have to give props to you, Fountain Inn for being so supportive. They were such sweet folks. They actually had researched all of Rochester. They had looked at the resources. They had rolled out the red carpet. They, I, the Rochester folks, had they had said that they had never been treated quite like that. But Excellent. that's good old Southern hospitality. Sure. And uh, sure. yeah, it was neat. They, I was very impressed that six folks from Rochester would come down and, and look at a case study of what someone else had done. So that did bring me back. Well, I think that gives you the uh, idea of the loyalty here, and uh, yes, sir. and uh, should give you a good, good send. -off. And they asked quite a bit of questions. Okay. They wore those those folks out, asking good questions and understanding the way that things were done there, and seeing how we can institute them here in Rochester. But there's no doubt that Rochester took a hit this year with the closing of Dean Foods, and I and I guess from my perspective anyway, the the, the new mayor coming in has expressed an interest in trying to find more businesses, more industry to come to the city. If the chamber, Fedco, and the new mayor can all coordinate their efforts, that would only be good for the city, correct? Yes, and actually that was one of the things I keep talking with um, both candidates about when we were looking at who was going to go into the position. That is a major basis for what Fountain Inn did. I look at what they did, and obviously Rochester is different, but the major basis for their support is the uh, manufacturing. And we had an HR roundtable that we did in Fountain Inn. They, are, they have the HR uh, resource, mm -hmm. the Fulton County HR Resource Association, which Deanna Godchop from First Redville, she is supportive of that. And uh, yeah, we have to have lots of supportive partnerships because I say this to everybody, if you build a downtown without the discretionary income to support that, right. you won't have a downtown for very long. Exactly. So you have to actually have those supportive bases. So how we can get industry to come here to provide that. More money means more money for First Redville, more money for WRI and for the rest of Rochester, and we can get all these projects done. Well, even if it's a service industry, even as yes, opposed sir. to a factory mm -hmm. type industry, yes, that sir. type of thing, any, any, kind, of, any yeah. kind of business, yes, sir. it's going to be a, a, a plus. Mm -hmm. More money for Chris. Yes, Chris needs a raise. He's doing a great job. He needs a raise today already. Yeah. Chris, we worked on it all morning, I'll tell you. Thirty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Amy Rowe, new uh, executive director of the Fulton Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for stopping by this Thank morning. Thank you. And I'm so supportive of y'all. Y'all have been so supportive of me and I've been here for six y'all. I don't know. I don't and all y'all is the other one. I don't know that that's gonna go very quickly. It, it'll so, take a while to get yeah, the Hoosier accent. Uh -huh. <laughs> But you thank were, you guys. You were there a while. <laughs> I was there. I used to say why a lot. So. Well, so we're, we're delighted to have you back in our thank community, you. and thank you for coming. Our uh, trivia this morning was Veterans Day wasn't always observed on November the 11th. How I many tried years? To look it up. How many years was it observed on the fourth Monday of October? Three, five, or seven? Chris, we always depend on Scott for this answer. Uh oh. Uh, I don't have the answer. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, and I okay. tried to Google it, but okay. I couldn't find it quick enough. I didn't All right. want to be Dina ready, usually so. goes to the middle one, so five. I'm uh, wrong. It's okay. seven. Seven. Yeah. By the way, you didn't mention Dina's uh, publication. In the well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Her side job yeah. is cartoonist. And, yeah. Uh, Excellent cartoon. Here's the cartoon that was in the Wall Street Journal yeah. yesterday. Just on the yeah. map. Salt and pepper. And uh, I'll read it to you. Okay. Uh, this shows these two distinguished <laughs> business guys. The two, it's the two of y'all, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> and it says Bob's paperwork had the uh, longest. Uh, elapsed time between printer and shredder. <laughs> <laughs> That's very impressive that she gets that all the yes, way. It is. Yeah. 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 Rochester's on the map. Right. Okay, let's close with this by Malcolm Forbes. And I got a, and then I got a second one. Okay. So don't shut me off. I won't. Malcolm <laughs> Forbes said, success follows doing what you want to do. There's no other way to be successful. Okay. And then Anonymous says, a worth goal in life is to be as good a person as your dog thinks you are. <laughs> well said. And a dog is always That's happy. That's right. Dick Belcher, thank you very much. Amy Rowe, thank you for being thank here. You Chris, so much for having appreciate me. having you in the studio this morning on the First Federal Program.